All rise, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. We have a presentation before we get started with visitor public comment from the Stormwater Annual Update. Gentlemen, welcome. Aren't you glad it's 4 o'clock instead of 6? Yes. Something different anyway. Good afternoon versus good evening. We have a slide presentation for you today. She's loading up. There we go. There you go. Okay. This is the Illicit Discharge Detection and Elimination Program, IDDE for short. My name is Rich Burns, and this is Russell Mihalik from GHD. We've been giving this presentation for several years now. Ten. Next slide. Just real quick, we used to be Conestoga Rovers and Associates, CRA. We are now GHD. Our company merged with an international engineering firm, so we are now one of the largest in the world. GHD actually has an office in Doylestown, and Russ and I are from the Exton office. Next slide. The agenda for tonight, there's only 18 slides, so it goes pretty quick. We'll go over the current status of the program. What we did in 2015 as far as inspections of outfalls, the sampling we did, and the results. Something new this year, we did some DNA sampling of our stormwater samples. We'll talk about next year in 2016, takeaways from the program, and any questions and answers you may have at the end. Next slide. The current status of the program, we are now in year 13 of this program, so it's been going on for quite a long time. We completed a typical hot spot sampling, so this is a mature program now. We have several hundred outfalls throughout the township. The last few years, we've concentrated on what are known as hot spots, basically where we've had results of elevated fecal coliform. In addition, this year, the township specifically requested that GHD inspect approximately 60 additional outfalls as well as the hot spots. PADEP 2015, we communicate with the case manager for the DP MPDS program who reviews the reports the township submits. He remains pleased. He's happy with what Doylestown Township is doing. He's aware of the application that's been submitted for updating the permit for the MPDS for the township. PADEP is working on a new general permit conditions, and that takes it to March 2018. That will be available in 2018, the new permit. So the township will get a new full permit at that time. Township has to submit a notice of intent for the individual applications. That's not due until 2017 for the permit. Next slide. Again, what we do here is basically stormwater sampling. This is really an offshoot of the U.S. EPA Clean Water Act, and what the townships are required is the stormwater outfalls. They're called municipal separate stormwater systems, MSSS, so MS4 for short. And basically what we're looking for is illicit discharges. So what we do is dry weather inspection and sampling. So there's a picture on the left of an outfall with water flow, and one on the right is dry. And this is 72 hours after the last significant precipitation event. So obviously you wouldn't expect to see flow, but on the left we do. So that may be an indication of an illicit discharge. Next slide. Back one. There's just some more pictures. There's some more pictures. Catch basins, that's things we look down to see what direction it leads us to the next outfall. We've mapped the entire township via the inspections. And on the right you can see some suds. Again, this is during like dry weather inspection. You wouldn't expect to see flow, let alone some suds. Again, a sign of potential illicit discharge. Next slide. That's the map of the township. 
we have it kind of color coded and divided into three areas. Uh, the one on the far left is area three, the one on the bottom is area one, and the one on the right is area two. Um, and it basically matches the township septic cycle map. Um, so we're in sync with that. Next slide. Uh, there's the septic cycle map, and that's basically how we divided up the township as far as the areas that we sample and monitor. Um, as you know, the cycles for the septic cleanouts are revolve over a three-year cycle. Um, we have several hundred on the map. You can see a lot of the dots. Those are outfalls that we've all inspected or, or tried to sample it at one time or another. Next slide. Uh, for 2015, we already completed our focused inspections and sampling. Um, we monitored historical hotspots again in all three areas. Uh, we finished the additional inspections and sampling that the township requested. Those were only in areas one and two. Those were about 60 out additional outfalls. Uh, and what we sample for is, again, fecal coliform. That's an indicator test of possible pathogens like E. coli, um, which are, are unhealthy. Uh, and this is part of the EPA uh, Clean Water Act again. Uh, so we look for flow at the outfalls and in the areas. Um, and if they have flow, we sample them. So in area one, that uh, we had 11 samples. Area two, 14. And area three, we only had three samples. Um, then we collect all the data. We send it out to an accredited laboratory. It does the fecal coliform testing. Uh, we review that data. And this year, we kind of did something different. We reviewed the fecal, total fecal coliform numbers, and we chose some specific areas that had increased levels in the past or currently this year, and we selected them for DNA fingerprinting. Um, and basically what that does is gives us an, a further indication of what it may be coming from, human or animal. Uh, next slide. And there's uh, different sources of fecal coliform in the environment. Basically, you can see some birds, cows, geese, um, humans, um, and that's what these extra DNA testing uh, analyses can provide us. Next slide. And there's there's the breakdown of the lab we chose. They can break it down into a uh, goose, cow, ruminant, which I believe is like deer, um, sheep. Uh, we can break it down into dog and human. Next slide. Uh, so the results for area one. In 2015, we took 16 samples at 14 outfalls, uh, and out of those, two were submitted for extra DNA testing. Uh, we'll go over the uh, DNA test on another slide. This is the fecal coliform results. We had six results that were greater than 200, uh, which is kind of the state's baseline for seeing contamination. Um, so we had six results over that 200 colonies per 100 milliliter. Um, the maximum number was 1,900, um, and again, DNA testing results, um, we had one positive for human and one positive for dog. Next slide. Area two, we took 14 samples at 11 outfalls, and three were submitted for additional DNA testing. Uh, four samples were greater than our baseline of 200, and we had one maximum fecal coliform greater than 6,000, which is pretty much the max the, the lab can, can tell us, so that, that's highly elevated. Um, we ran uh, three samples for DNA, two came positive for human, and one positive for dog. Next slide. Area three, uh, we only took three samples at three outfalls, and we did not submit any additional samples for DNA, um, and those samples were greater than 200, so uh, area three is good. Next slide. Uh, just a summation of all three areas. Generally, area one, uh, the fecal coliform levels somewhat decreased from last year. Um, we only we had two greater than 6,000 this year. Let's um, see. No, that was or that's last, last year. year right? Last year. Last year. Sorry. Two greater than 6,000 last year. So this year's max was only 1,900. So that's somewhat of an improvement. Uh, area two, no significant changes. Uh, we had a maximum of uh, 1,200. 
and area three, nothing was above 200, so that's good. And basically overall, pretty much the same as the year previous. Next slide. Going forward, uh, we'll continue doing hot spot sampling in areas one, two, and three. Uh, usually, generally, we try to hit about 25 locations. Some years, these hot spots have flow, and sometimes they don't. Uh, we'll do any additional inspections that the township uh, requests. Uh, we'll continue to comply with the current permit, uh, which was effective starting from 2013. Uh, additional source investigations as needed. Uh, we've done these in the past. We may continue them again. Uh, dye tracing, if we think some of the results of this investigation indicate illicit discharges coming from a specific homeowner or area of homes, we'll request from the homeowners to do dye tracing where we pour dye um, down a toilet and we trace it down to see if it comes out the storm basins and the catch basins in the uh, street. Uh, we've also done TV inspections in the past um, where we actually run a little remote camera up, up uh, the catch basins to see if there's any legal connections into the storm sewers. Um, and we'll most likely continue the DNA testing since we got positive results from that. And uh, especially if we get some flow at spots we don't normally, um, that we didn't get flow this past year, but in previous years we might have got a high fecal. If we get flow, we'll probably select a few more for DNA testing. And we'll start mapping that out. Uh, next slide. Uh, basically, the conclusion takeaways, Township remains in compliance with the MS4 MPDS IDD program. Uh, we'll continue the inspections and sampling. Uh, again, this is highly related to septic system maintenance from homeowners in the Township. Um, public part participation is key. Uh, it's about pollution prevention and good housekeeping. And again, the overall goal is to improve water quality. And that is the end of the presentation. Does anybody have any questions? We're doing our budget now, so we want to make sure you've merged with this big company. Are our fees going to be uh, the same as next year as they are this year, despite that big company merger? Yeah, no, they're not, they're not going up. Yeah, substantially or anything. Okay. Not, not going up substantially. <laughs> what does that mean? It's for definition of yeah, substantially. Their, their proposal is actually on the agenda later. Oh, okay. I'm not sure of my but. individual rate, but I mean, we already mm -hmm. presented a budget, which I think is in line with previous mm -hmm. years okay. or less. Mm -hmm. um, again, like years previous, mm -hmm. you know, we were out there at hundreds of those outfalls. We've really narrowed it down. So. I think the key is the DNA testing. Yeah. Um, you know, we've certainly people have come in when we look at project areas and stuff, and we talk about <coughs> what's in that um, fecal coliform we find, and it's interesting to find that it is human. Yeah. Some of it. Some of it. Yes. Anybody have any questions? Um, Anybody out there have any questions? I have a, Thank you. Oh, sorry. a, a question. This was on uh, area one where you did 16 samples, and six samples were greater than the 200. Mm -hmm. Is that good or bad? Um, 200's our baseline criteria. Right. So that's, that's, it's worthy enough to follow up again and sample the next time as well. Um, so do we see repeat offenders? Do we know, like I know you guys look at hot spots yes. and that stuff, so how do we make sure repeat offenders are complying? Well, I'll, 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 let me take this one, Rich. Again, the hot spots, we go out there. They have historically always been high in those areas. They're some of the areas we have tried to TV also and look for illicit discharge, uh, illegal hookups in the storm sewer pipe that you can't see from the surface. Yeah. We cannot pinpoint the exact resident on that street that could be, if, if it isn't exact, it could be all the residents on that street. We, we can't pinpoint exactly which resident on that street it is. All we know is that at the end of that pipe where we collect the sample, the numbers are always above the 200, which we consider a hot spot then. So, you know, it, even, even to go in there, we've tried doing some dye tracing in the past on some of these homes until it actually goes through the septic system, through the ground and that sort of thing. We're not seeing the dye show up in the catch basins. We have been lucky 
on one instance where we actually pumped it into or we dumped it in the, the toilet. They flushed it, and within 15 minutes it was coming out. But that place had an illicit discharge pipe hooked into the catch basin, and that's why we saw it so quickly there. Mm -hmm. So where you have six there, yes, that, that's... That should raise a warning sign to you that there is something going wrong in that general area. Yeah, that's why we also show the max to kind of give a sense of range. But of those six that were greater than 200, you know, there's 250s, there's 500s. But some of those in years previous may have been much more elevated, so we keep track of them. So what do we do next? If we know there's six, what do we That's the Pebble well, Ridge area. Yeah, we may send out some yeah. more letters like to residents. The Pebble Ridge area, so... Okay. DEP's already directed us to put sewers in. in. I was going to say, sewers are one way to go with it, or, okay, you know, mini, mini treatment plants, which, again, residents are I, not going to want to want to spend more money than they need to. To the specific area where we're looking at the sewers. Okay. I know it's area one, but area one is big. So. Yes. Right, and yes. if you, the, in our report that comes to the township, we will have specifically listed the outfalls that have those high levels. You can go back and look at one of the township maps then and see where okay. those outfalls are located and know exactly what roads they're coming from. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you very much. See that. you next yep. year. Happy holidays. Okay. You yeah. too. Any public comment tonight? Keith Peters on Steep Chase Drive in the township. Final evening, it's probably supervisor. Thank you. Just briefly, I wanted to talk about the building renovation um, idea. I know it's further down on the agenda, but now it's the time for public comment. And I presented the uh, supervisors and, and ancillary staff with some of the um, ideas that I have come across. Or earlier, I talked about rejecting concept A and concept B. So um, I put together a little thing called concept I because I understand there were eight previous concepts done, and the ninth letter of the alphabet is I. So this is concept I. And the upshot of, of the whole presentation that I'd like to make is that I think there's enough land here on the municipal complex to put a new or renovated building. We don't need to touch the tennis courts and the basketball courts or any other part of Central Park or anywhere else in the township. I think there's enough land here to take care of the administrative needs of the township. Um, I'd also talk about things like building up or down up and or down. Um, solar panels or green uh, roofing is something that I think ecologically makes sense. Um, switching the police and public side, which I think other people have also addressed, makes sense. I think from a traffic uh, uh, standpoint, a construction standpoint, and park side access, the public coming in, the salt building and the fuel pumps apparently need to be moved, and I have them on I think page three of the presentation I have for you there. Um, I think the a common public meeting room makes – or common lobby, I shouldn't say public meeting room, but a common lobby for the public side and the police side could be where we currently are meeting, in the public meeting room. Um, again, part of a new building. And I talk about squaring off the front drive so that there are additional parking spaces for – this lobby area for the police side, knowing that most of the public will be parking over on maybe the new side. And I have saved the mural. Um, I couldn't really use um, Dan Aykroyd's voice of uh, Julia Child from Saturday Night Live, but I think it's important to save that. So if we're going to um, demolish certain things, I don't think the mural should be one of them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Keith. Anybody else have com public comment? Okay. Announcements. Our next meeting is Tuesday, December 15th. Uh, good ideas for gifts, movie tickets, ski tickets, benches, bricks, and the township mural print. Contact the administration building for more information. What's the township mural print? We have a print, like poster print of that. Oh, okay. That we, can sell. that we can sell. Okay. That we do sell. That we sell. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, next item on the agenda, minutes approval for the meeting of September uh, November 17th. Is there a motion to approve? They were voluminous, I should say. 
Move to approve. Looking more like a transcript than minutes, you know, I think. Um, there's a motion. Is there a second? A second. Thanks. Um, any corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I know you're trying to be complete, but <laughs> I'm, I'm in charge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't mean, need to hear I know, that. I had a tough time. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay. Reports from the solicitor. I have none tonight, Madam Chairperson. Uh, Chief? None at this time. Um, Township Engineer? Nothing at this time. Manager? Um, yes. In your packet, uh, you have one thing we need to do is set the reorganization meeting for January 4th. Um, and then the auditors for January 5th. Um, if there's a time that you would like to hold that. Four o'clock. Four o'clock? Yeah. So we have to bring the judge in, right? Yes. And they're usually pretty busy that day, so. Yeah. Let's do four o'clock. Four o'clock. Is everybody okay with that? So four o'clock mm -hmm. on January 4th. Four, and then yeah. for the auditors, they typically meet in the evening. Are you okay with them at seven if, sure. they, if they're okay with seven? Yep. Okay. There's a new, is there somebody getting Yes, started? there's a new auditor. He'll have to be here on the 4th. We'll make sure that okay. he comes then. Okay. So what time was the auditors? The auditors, usually they're Probably at 7 soon. on the, seven? the next okay. day, yeah. Tuesday. They'll mm -hmm. confirm that, though. Yeah. Okay. Usually, all right, so we're waiting on the time on that one. It most likely will be 7, but okay. we'll confirm them with them unless they want to meet earlier. Okay. The else? other thing I have is just for informational purposes, this is on the Zoning Hearing Board application for Doylestown um, 2, Route 313, TVC, that's the um, drug center that's proposed. There's a new date, um, and they amended their application. So the, the hearing's now January 28th. They amended their application to include a variance um, because they are going to drop slightly below the five-acre requirement. Um, as the board knows, you've directed us to attend. Mr. Garten's office and I will be there um, attending and observing and reporting back to the board. So that's really for your information or any questions at this point. Okay. So we don't have to take any action on that tonight? No. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, status <coughs> of oh, that's that. Mm -hmm. Supervisors. Um, Ryan, sir, is there, do you have anything? Um, well, I just want to, I mean, this is just kind of a comment and a kudos mm -hmm. to the staff. You know, I know we kind of gave you a, a big job last meeting to, you know, well, at least some of us did in terms of, you know, seeing where there were potential ways to find different cuts and whatnot. And, you know, I think you did a tremendous job. I don't, you know, I think we have to go back and look at all of that. And, you know, Barb and I may disagree on the essential versus non-essential for that, but I think you did like a fantastic job. So thank you. Thank you for um, trusting us to do that. And obviously if anybody has any comments or suggestions, if you can feed them to us. Mm -hmm. And then um, we are meeting with the Ways Means on the 8th or 9th, I think it is. Um, and we can kind of review it there and then obviously be prepared with anything for your packet um, for the meeting on the 15th. Is that fair? Yeah. That sounds well, I do want to hear comments on tonight on, the, um, on what you presented. Oh, okay. So um, if you're, when you're done, we can go. Yeah, through. no, I just wanted to, okay. it was more just a kudos. Like, I think they did a great job. So. Thank you. Um, no, that's it. Rick? I want to report on two township meetings. Uh, one was the planning commission. We, we went to the Tabor Homes property and had a walkthrough meeting uh, with the developer, Rob Gunlock, and the president of Tabor, Jonathan. As we walked the property and listened to Jonathan, some issues arose. Um, you remember Rob was here at the Board of Supervisors meeting and explained that he was going to ask for a change in zoning, uh, a use tax addition, and a few additional waivers as well. At the next Planning Commission meeting, we reviewed what was discussed at the walkthrough and concluded that it would be good to have all the parties sit down together and see if there's a course of action that would benefit everyone um, it could be developed. I, I'll keep you updated on that, but we're still working on uh, the, the basics, actually, on, on the Tabor Homes project. <clears throat> uh, the other meeting was the Board of Supervisors meeting. My comments at the last meeting were received significantly different than I intended them uh, to be received. I believe poor communication is the responsibility of the communicator. Therefore, I apologize and would, clar would like to clarify my comments. The budget has been worked on for many months. Many volunteers from the Ways and Means Committee, 
supervisors and township staff spent well over 100 hours going through the proposed 2016 budget. After the budget was compiled and put into draft form, the next step was to vet the entire budget as a whole. This analysis of the total budget picture takes several weeks, but it's critical. When all the pieces of the budget puzzle were assembled, it was handed to the Board of Supervisors because of self-imposed time constraints without being vetted as a complete picture. The Board of Supervisors should not get a draft budget until the township manager has had enough time to go through the total assembled budget line by line. The budget was by no means thrown together. My comments were not meant to imply that this is what happened. Each of the over 100 account lines were, were analyzed. The good news is this rush to get the budget to the Board of Supervisors will not happen again. Processes are being changed to ensure that in the future a final draft budget will be delivered, will be delivered in adequate time to be vetted properly. Again, my apologies. Okay, thanks. Um, Ken, do you have anything? Two comments. Um, one, uh, we've worked, the township, uh, the staff and the EAC has worked hard to develop meadows throughout uh, the township property. And they, they've done a great job doing that. They have been recently cut, but they've been asked to be mowed to get ready for the spring uh, growing. And all we ask is that the uh, when the mowing contracts go out, they stay within their confines of the mowing grass <laughs> and not tread into the uh, meadow territory. So I'm sure you'll take care of that, Dave. Um, the second point is just to follow up a little bit on what Rick was commenting on. Um, I've already had discussions with Lee Schwartz, Chair of Ways and Means, in that one of the things we want to do in their first meeting in January is to do a post-mortem review of the process we went through this year. We did a lot of changes this year in the budgeting process, and uh, some really good stuff and some things that didn't go as well as we would have liked. So I think it's very important right in the very beginning, while it's fresh in everybody's mind, we go back, take a look at it, what can we change, how do we make it better, and for, to make it smoother for everybody. So we're going to do that at our first meeting in January. Okay. Thank you. Sean, you have anything? I don't. Thank you. I've okay. my committees and met since the last meeting, and other than you've already mentioned about, I said nothing, and then here I go, about uh, gifts, gifts for the holiday season. Bricks, benches, sections of the bike and hike path, which we, Stephanie, we oh, talked right. about in the last bike meeting. You can contact the township for that if you want to name a section after somebody living or deceased and remember go. So, so now's the time to do it. So. Or name a piece of a new play piece at Kids a Castle. Kids Castle, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my plan. More than century trail. We did. Mm -hmm. More than century So many opportunities. Trail. Lots of, lots of Christmas <laughs> opportunities, uh, lots of Christmas. around here. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank I would you. like to comment on the memo that we received a <clears throat> November 30 from the staff regarding the half mill reduction in the 2016 budget. Um, I, I'm, in, uh, for the most part, okay with most of it. Um, I don't agree, however, that we should remove the um, proposed non-uniform HRA, HRA cards from the budget. I think that should stay in. Whatever that amount is, I think that belongs um, as an appropriate expense for the non-uniform staff. And um, I talked to Stephanie about the emergency cont uh, continuity servers, and I think that is something that we should be looking at in the proposed um, mm -hmm addition or renovation of our Great. entire facility. And the other thing, um, I did check with um, the chairman of Kids Castle, and he says that, um, and I, I agree, that the $25,000 can be reduced by 9100 but the Kids Castle will still need $15,900 in the 2016 budget to meet um, requirements of a, a, grant, a funding grant source. Other than that, I am okay with it. So. I'm just putting this out to you now because those are the things that I have a problem with. 95% like of it, I'm okay. With that other 5%, um, I'm going to encourage the board to kin keep in the budget. 15, um, 15 nine for the Kids Castle project and the HRA cards for the staff, non-uniform staff. Other than that, I'm good. All right. Anybody else have any comment on that? No. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda. Blah, blah, okay.
Okay. Uh, shared use path grant agreement for the Lower State Road. Um, Mr. Kelso is here who always talks and supports the Bike and Hike Committee, but this is the 100% reimbursable grant from PennDOT. Uh, this is the Federal uh, Transportation Alternative Program grant that we received. Um, you will see that that has increased by about 466000 Our match that we initially did, which was the engineering on it, does not change at all. We are getting extra um, money in the grant to help with the railroad crossing, and Mr. Kelso will elaborate a little further. I don't think I can add anything to that. That sort of sums it up. Uh, so we're getting more money. For we're getting a, a <laughs> 400-plus thousand um, and it's mainly to help with the SEPTA crossing. This is Lower State Road, and I think all of us that use that road see a lot of dangerous uh, pedestrian and bicycle activity there. And we've had people on our own bike and hike committee uh, fall and break bones at the railroad crossing. So it's, a, it's an important trail. It's a key component of the overall trail plan for the township and the community as a whole. And. Uh, we were nervous for a while about the railroad crossing. SEPTA, we anticipated them to step up. They didn't. They chose not to participate at all, although they've been extremely cooperative with us. Uh, they always have, and, and I think it was just a matter of circumstances here. But through uh, our grant team, meaning Stephanie and, and Chris Stanford from Baker, I think that's the value of having an experienced team there. They, they understand the grant program. They understand what's happening in other grants in the area. And for example, in this one, SEPTA agreed to pay 100% of another railroad crossing in an adjoining community where the grant had anticipated grant money going towards that. So I think that worked out great. It's just having those contacts, working with uh, the neighboring communities is a big, big help in grant programs, uh, uh, more than we anticipate sometimes. So that's what we're asking. We're asking for the township to enter into this contract with, with PennDOT for the grant. Stephanie pointed out the match has already been made. We got more money, but we didn't have to add any more match to it. This is an unusual is. grant program where usually it's a 25% match, 50%. This is, uh, we have to, our match is paying for the design. That's pretty well done. It's, uh, the uh, contract with Baker in the original grant application was $80,000, so it's less than 10% match. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good way to do this. Adding another 400000 didn't cost us a, a penny in match. Excellent. So the total so, is $1,260,000, right. and it's 100% reimbursable. Good job, Tom. Well, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm it wasn't me. <laughs> Just a question about that. You had said SEPTA didn't step up. What is for that cost, mean? That well, to pay normally, the, yeah, normally on these SEPTA crossings, and I don't, if you remember the underpass replacement in, in the college, SEPTA shares costs on that. Okay. They don't have to. They have in the past. They, did, they chose not to on this one. And, and it was mainly because it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't tied to one of their stations. Um, yeah. And the other ones, I think, were more, and the underpass was more of an opportunity to replace a deteriorating but, uh, structure. I, I'm assuming they have to approve or uh, any work that's done at that crossing. Yes, and, and, and that's, they are working that's on the under, with us. Yeah. They're actually helping with the design. Right. But they're just not physically. And that's underway. The That's been going on for the past okay, six so months probably. They'll help with the design. They'll help with the inspections. They're just not going to help with the work. They're not going to help share the cost, right? Okay, okay. And that's, that's we've got the money in the grant now to, got it. to okay. more than cover that. Okay. Well, good job, everyone. Yeah. Uh, we have a resolution to approve. Is there a motion to approve the entry of this contract with the federal so aid moved. reimbursement? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well Thank you again, Tom, for all your work on, this, on the trails. Township building renovations. Continued discussion. Ken, you doing this, sir? Yes. If. Uh, the PowerPoint in the back will come up in a minute. <clears throat> and, uh, pull Is up this the PowerPoint? Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll just talk to these. Yeah, yeah. let's just talk yeah, to the that's paper. Fine. Um, the group met uh, as from the last um, 
for a supervisor meeting, we said we start off with a small group, and that small group is Stephanie, Dick John, Joe Phillips from our architecture group, myself. We did meet. Our first meeting was on 1125, and what we said we would do is we needed additional experts bringing in from either the chief or Ken Wallace or anybody else we would bring people in as we needed to. One of the key things that we wanted to do is we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We said we did a lot of good work. There was like seven or eight different alternatives discussed in the past. There was a lot of staff input, and we looked at space alternatives and all those different space requirements and all those different alternatives. So let's build on what all the good work that was done. But one of the other premises was is that we said if we're going to look at any and all alternatives, the only one that is the only bad idea is the one we don't talk about. So we were throwing everything on the table and said let's talk about it. We can discount it, but let's make sure that it was at least had its merit for a discussion point. We also said let's build to resolve our immediate requirements. And what that means is that we have some very immediate needs that we need to resolve with site security, with what's happening on the police side, with the staff on the second floor. And we need to balance that with what are their future site plans and what is the financial impact of doing all this stuff. So those are the things that we said we need to work at. And so what we did is said let's start with a project concept and bring that forward. So next slide is our project concept. One is that the administration and the police would remain on the existing site. We had other discussions that can we move the police here, can we move the staff there. No, they're all going to stay on the existing site. But one of the primary things we said we wanted to do is flip the administration and the police. Today we have the police on the park side, we have the admin on the parking lot side, and we want to flip the police, put them on that side, leave the administration open to the park area. Key thing here is that it provides the police with a controlled, secure access to the site and egress from it, allows them to go into their sally port, evidence storage, police activities. It's all separate from the public. Provides the administration more exposure to the general public in Central Park. And key thing is that, you know, we're going to have some renovations and we're going to have new additions and all those things will be required. Exactly how much we do or what we do, we haven't decided yet, but we're going to, we're coming forward later on with a approval from the board to say we can proceed with this idea. So basically, what we're saying is that the existing building will be, could be torn down, it could be just completely gutted it, but we're going to look at all, what is the best way to manage the space and come up with a good financial plan for doing this. We also looked at what are the projects that we can defer or reduce. And what we said is the wash bay, we would defer that. That was $167,000. Salt storage was reduced from $338,000 to $80,000. And that was already in the works in our budget for 2016. We had 40, we said we'd have 40 in 2017. Park maintenance storage, that was reduced from $627,000 to $75,000. And we're proposing that the multipurpose recreation building be deferred at this point in time. Next slide. Key points to remember. If no renovations were done, we would still need to allocate within our five-year budgeting process to spend on infrastructure in the capital plan for approximately $2 million. We're going to have to upgrade HVACs, heating systems, and all that stuff. All that would have to happen if you did no renovations at all. So there's still a good chunk of money we would be spending. And this is just more for the board's thought, is because when we look at the estimates that we had for A and B, none of those had furniture expenses in them. So it would have been more than that. So I don't want people doing math in their head what numbers we're coming to. So for Board of Supervisors feedback, what we need now, and this is why we're coming here today, one, we said we would give you updates on what's going on, is we want your okay on the flip of the admin and the police. Put the police on that side, 
leave the admin on the park side. Playing courts remain in the current location. And also the multipurpose recreation building be deferred. And if they decide to bring that forward later, that would stand on its own merit, and that is not part of the renovation process. I have a question. When we split, are we expanding the space? We would be, yes. We would be adding on, we would be renovating plus adding some space on. To administration or police? Yes. Both? We don't, we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. This, what this is, is the concept. Gotcha. This is the concept. Okay. Now we can go to the next one. If you agree to the flip, you agree to deferring the multipurpose room, and you defer, and the tennis court, the playing courts. Yeah, the big, the big gymnasium. Yes, yeah. You agree to those three, then we'll go work on, and come back with all the other stuff. My question is, what, if it's not about a space thing, what's the biggest reason? Is it the parking lot for flipping? Like if you had to name. Secure access. Okay, it is, okay. You provide, you want access in. Sally port, okay. And all that, it's away from the park, it's away from the public. Okay. That really secures the site. Got it. There's a lot of times when the police cars have to race out. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. How did, the, how did the architects think about the flipping? We talked about that. That was yeah, part that of one plan. Actually, was, was part, part of one, one of, of the, the plans. And uh, Joe said he would be doing stuff with his mashed potatoes on Thanksgiving, trying to come <laughs> up with ideas. But uh, so ne next slide is our next steps. Our next project meeting is December 9th. We will continue to provide, come back here and give you updates. And the other thing I said we would do is that you would ask for end of year recommendation. We cannot do that. We will come back by February 3rd with a recommendation. Okay. We're good. We're everybody good? Any everybody questions? I'm good. Chief, what do you, how do you yeah. feel about everything? I just would like to know how the flow of the flip would work. Okay. Well, that's important. That's mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. Of how Are you oh, participating yeah. in these discussions? He, we, we had one meeting. Okay. We had one meeting. So, no, he hasn't. And yes, he will. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. See? Mm. You'll know. Okay. All right, good. Thank you very much. Yep. Good job. Mm. Uh, all righty, next item. Police and Fire Federal Credit Union request to add um, to employees' options. Yes. Um, the Police and Fire Federal Credit Union came out. They gave a presentation to the entire staff that were interested, and we do have several employees, both um, uniform and non-uniform employees, that would like the ability to, um, I guess, bank with the Federal Credit Union, if that's appropriate wording, um, and use their services. We currently have um, uh, agreements with uh, the American uh, Heritage Federal Credit Union and the Mark Sharp and Dome Federal Credit Union uh, where employees go, but this is just another tool in the toolbox letting them pick and choose and have variety. And we would recommend that we, um, we have to provide them a letter saying that our employees can utilize um, and be a member. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. And then the stormwater GHD proposal, which is yes, quite timely. Mm -hmm. You just saw the presentation, compliance with our MS4 permit. Um, their proposal um, would be for $14,950. Um, we have the $25,000 allocated in our budget to do the stormwater work that they do for us on an annual basis. So there's an extra $10,000 allocated for this for next year? Um, it's fourteen nine fifty. That was thirteen seven previously. No, it's twenty five in the budget. But there's twenty five. But budget. there's other work that we do as part of that, which is if we have to make repairs of storm inlets and things like that as well. There's in house money to do that as well. So how? What's the increase over the cost for this year? Um, for next from thirteen seven to fourteen nine fifty. Your company. There's a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> a horrible increase. All right. The uh, zoning hearing board application for the Brandy and Robert Alexander properties. This was an interesting read. Mm -hmm. It was. Um, this is an appeal of a zoning hearing board decision, or uh, not a zoning hearing, but of a zoning enforcement action taken by our code department. Um, they have established a, um, a daycare center in the R1 zoning district. Can I just... Just to be clarified, yes. they're renting a, prop, a, a building on this property? 
renting a cottage. The renting a cottage on the property. And the renting the cottage for daycare. Yes. Totally in violation of our, they actually had a big, it was, I mean, it's a huge property. And so, and we actually, there was an article in the newspaper and we immediately found it and said, oh, it was very quiet. They don't have as, it's not a huge operation, so we haven't gotten any complaints or anything like that. But we did take an enforcement action immediately and they're appealing that. My recommendation is that we send the solicitor to attend with us at the hearing. Well, who are the parties? The landlord or the tenants? The tenant. The tenants are using the property, but the landlord. Oh, right, right. Are they all in this enforcement action? Well, the property owner gets the enforcement action because it's their property. But the application is actually filed on behalf of the tenant. Okay. I agree with Stephanie. This needs to be addressed and I have no problem sending Jeff or his stand in for that. Agreed. Thank you. Now, if we're successful in this enforcement action, who bears the cost of sending our solicitor? You always bear that cost. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify that. I was like, I never thought of that question. Just clarifying that for the public. But I believe there's fines that can be applied, right, Jeff? Well, once they file the, if they don't comply after the zoning hearing board renders a decision, then you can file citations and do all kinds of different things. But once they appeal the notice of violation, then it stays those proceedings pending the zoning hearing board decision. So today they cannot run a daycare center? They can until the zoning hearing board decides. Okay. All right. All right. Is that it? Announcements. We're next meeting on December 15th at 7 p.m. Good gift ideas. You've heard them all. You can name a portion of the trails. You can buy ski tickets, movie tickets, benches, bricks, commemorative mural township prints, and other items. Please come forward. Thank you. 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 Thank